We're not in the Crime Talk studios today, but the news is, first, the judge boots the attorneys off the Delphi case, even after they offered to do it for free. The FBI returns to the scene of the crime. Guess it's a good thing they didn't knock that house down. And an example of how it's always about the money and their dumb criminal of the day. Well, let's talk about it. Good day, everyone. My name is Scott Reich, and this is Crime Talk. Thanks for joining us. As you can tell, we are not in the Crime Talk studios. Yes, it's one of those days where, well, not going to make it back to the office because everything went slower than expected in court today. So, you know the drill. Subscribe if you haven't. Like if you do. Leave me a comment below and hit that little bell for notifications. And since we've been in YouTube jail for telling the truth and being honest, well, guess what? We're coming off of that suspension. So, make sure you hit that little bell to make sure that you get notifications when we go live or put up new content. And remember, you can always listen to us on any of your favorite podcasting apps. All right, let's go ahead and open the record for November 1st, 2023. And first on the docket, the Delphi case. Well, as you know, the judge in the Delphi case had kicked off the previous attorneys that were representing Mr. Allen in that case. He's obviously accused of... Uh, killing Libby German and Abby Williams. So how did all this happen? Well, remember the defense filed a motion that they said the prosecution and the police were basically not doing their jobs. They overlooked the uh, killing of the satanic cult, basically, and uh, therefore uh, dismissed the case and that there were lies in the statements and therefore the affidavits uh, were false information and therefore should be released. Well, then there was an accusation that crime scene photos had been leaked from the defense attorney's offices. Well, there was supposed to be a hearing last week. The attorneys show up, uh, Andrew Baldwin and Brand, R-O-Z-Z-I. -I. I guess he pronounces it Rossi, even though it's a Z. Really? Anyway, the judge ordered them off the case, basically gave them the option of withdrawing or I'm going to kick you off the case. They chose to withdraw. Well, then earlier, uh, late last week, early this week, they filed motions with, with the Indiana Supreme Court saying, you can't kick me off, judge. What you're doing is illegal and you're striking all of our pleadings. You can't do that. We'll see what happens in the Supreme Court, but there was going to be a hearing and it was actually held yesterday. And what happens? So the attorneys show up, Baldwin and Rossi, saying that they're going to represent Mr. Allen and they're going to do it for free. The judge said, not on my watch. The judge said that Baldwin and Rossi were removed from the case because of the leak evidence, that it was a gross deviance, um, basically malpractice, violation of the court's orders, and they are off the case. So the court has now ordered that defense attorney William Labrado and Richard S Sermon uh, are the new appointed attorneys for Mr. Allen's case. Now, this gets really interesting. If the attorneys violated the court order, they should be held in contempt. That's what takes place. I have never seen a, an attorney, let alone two attorneys, on a very serious capital case whereby they're removed for alleged misconduct, but there's no grievances at the bar uh, saying that they should be disbarred or some sort of uh, sanctions. Maybe that's forthcoming. Never seen anything like it. And remember, this raises all kinds of weird issues. Yes, Mr. Allen is entitled to counsel, not necessarily counsel of his choosing. But in this particular case, the attorneys are willing to do it pro bono. That's free. Now, my advice to them would be run. You got off of a case. This case will bankrupt you to defend. And more than likely, if Mr. Allen's convicted, he's going to say you didn't have the resources to effectively do it and you prejudice my defense. But when a defendant says, no, I want that attorney and he's willing to do it for free, it really gets into Sixth Amendment counsel of choice issues. I don't know why the court wants to make these appellate issues when they didn't need to exist. Now, the prosecution basically says that the attorneys for Mr. Allen lied. And that's another reason why they should be off the case. Well, if you think what they put in their motions were lies, then let us see why uh, it is untruthful or not supported by the facts in the particular case. It's very odd to me. And yes, when there's a protective order, attorneys have to protect the information. 
if somebody takes it from your office without your knowledge, well, maybe you should have done better protecting it. But to kick you off your case, it's very odd to me. And I somehow have a feeling there may be something else there, but I just don't know what quite yet. But just remember, very unusual. And needless to say, the uh, trial date is uh, not going to be set until October 15th of 2024. Why? Because the new attorneys need to get up to speed. So literally another year in the making. Be curious to see if the new attorneys adopt the motions of the old attorneys or if they think that the theory of the previous attorneys was just complete hogwash. Next on the docket, the FBI returns to the crime scene. The crime scene being the Moscow, Idaho uh, murders of the four college students where Brian Koberger is now charged. Well, yesterday and today, Idaho prosecutors and the FBI visited the uh, campus, off-campus housing there for the four students. And according to uh, news outlets in the area, the plywood that covers the windows and doors uh, has been or will be removed. And um, it'll be re-secured after investigators and prosecutors are finished with their review. Now, as you may recall, the defense early on said we wanted access to that particular house for Mr. Koberger's defense. They did what they said they were going to do. The prosecution released the home back to uh, the owners, who then turned it over to the school. The school said they were going to destroy the home. Well, it hasn't been destroyed. I was a little surprised that they would do that since the case hasn't ended just yet. But obviously, the FBI thinks there's something worth looking for. Perhaps it's just getting more specific measurements. Maybe somebody do, didn't do something correctly, but it is rather unusual that given the amount of time that has passed, that they want to go back into the crime scene that they previously released. The question then becomes, well, now you're going to have to give equal access to the defense, particularly if any of those reports, based on what was prepared in there, is different. And oh, I guess it looks like it looks like the FBI is in fact working with the prosecution, hence supporting the motion for the defense and the court's order saying turn over all of the genetic genealogy information that the FBI relied upon. But yet, but yet the prosecution made the argument that, well, I don't have any control over the FBI. Somehow I think the prosecutors told the FBI, we're going to the house, be there. Next on the docket, all right, it is always about the money. How many times have we said this, ladies and gentlemen? Well, let me give you an example of this, all right? So a North Dakota woman is accused of poisoning her boyfriend after learning about his um, inheritance. And, you know, a paltry $30 million, because that happens every day. So Ida Kenoyer, K-E-N-O-Y-E-R, was charged with the September 5th murder of Stephen Riley. And according to the uh, police, it was all because of, well, the money. How did uh, Mr. Riley meet his demise? Well, according to the autopsy, he drank a lot of antifreeze. Who makes that mistake, right? Well, needless to say, Ms. Kenora told investigators that she planned to split the inheritance uh, with Mr. Riley's uh, children, his son, actually, you know, because 30 million can go a long way. You only need half of that uh, to do that. So what, um, how is she doing this when they weren't related? Well, she's claiming that she was involved with him and uh, therefore that she's entitled to the money because of the fact that they are holding themselves out as common law married. Well, most people, you have to do it for a long time for to everybody. And you just can't say somebody is married to you after they're dead and they inherit a lot of money. So we will uh, see how things go. This ought to be interesting because it turns out that um, Ms. Knoyer um, is going to represent herself in court proceedings. I would imagine, I would imagine that um, the court may raise some competency issues on this case as well. All right. Be careful, ladies and gentlemen. No drinking the antifreeze. All right. And then finally today, our dumb criminal of the day. Please meet Deshaun Brown. Now, he is accused of pleasuring himself while walking around a Target store 
in Iowa. And um, he told police that he was not uh, pleasuring himself with an actual sexual organ, but rather a toy that he had in his shorts. Well, despite trying to uh, convince the officers of that, he was busted for indecent exposure. Now, Mr. Brown lives just a few blocks away from the uh, Target store. And guess what? He was caught earlier this month with the exact same thing, touching uh, his closed genitalia as well as an exposed male organ. Well, um, so he has that going for him as well. Like I said, when questions by the police for this particular little stroll through Target, he claimed that uh, he had been engaged with a toy, not his actual adult sex organ. Anyway, he's been charged with uh, several misdemeanor indecent exposure accounts and has been released from custody on a $3,000 bond. Mr. Brown, you know how your mom always said when you went into the stores, keep your hands to yourself. We look with our eyes, not our hands. Quit touching. Quit touching yourself, for God's sakes. Keep your hands to yourself, even if you're touching yourself. Don't do it. All right, that's all we have for today. Sorry we were not able to come to you from the Crime Talk studios, but we brought it to you from a lovely and gorgeous conference room here at the Denver Courthouse. Hope you enjoy it. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time on Crime Talk.